feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances that you cannot get through. Right now it feels that there is no way out and you're going under. Because proving time and time again, he will fix this for you. And he will do it. Let us pray. 
Father, thank you for this morning, and thank you for your holy word. Thank you for bringing us to church this morning. We pray that you will guide us, lead us by the Holy Spirit to do all of your will. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. This morning, we are continuing on our series on how to pray. Amen. And I want to look at the subject or the topic of why some people pray for a short time and why some people pray for a long time. Amen. Why some people pray for a short time and why some people pray for a long time. How many of you pray for a long time? How many of you pray for a short time? Most of us pray for a short time, isn't it? We are not able to pray for a long time. How many would like to be able to pray for a long time? <laughs> Did I share with you last week about how to talk to a great person? What are the principles? Number one, do not ask or mention your desires for a long time, isn't it? Number two, do not mention your needs for a long time. Is that not so? When you meet an important person, do not ask for need. And if you're a black man and you meet a white man, don't tell him what you need. They have, there is a mind that a black man is coming to beg for something. So it lowers your respect. Amen. Is that not so? Do, learn how to stay comfortably in the presence of a great person. Hallelujah. Because many people are fidgety and uh, nervous in the presence of an important person. And the important person knows it when you are in the presence of somebody who is not used to being in the presence of an important person. It's easy to see, you know. Even when you, you are not used to eating um, with cutlery, it is easy to see when you are in the presence of an important person and you've been, food has been set before you with cutlery because you are used to eating with your fingers. Do you understand my message? And then also, even when you use the cutlery, it is easy to see those who are not used to it. You can see that they are as if they are holding spears. <laughs> or little arrows. Again, you have to get used to being in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Staying in the presence of God for a long time. Just being comfortable being where God is. I just want to be where you are. Amen. Dwelling daily in your presence. Hallelujah. So we must learn to be comfortable in church, in the presence of God at a prayer meeting, not to be fidgety, wanting to leave, looking at the time. I mean, most of us don't look at our watches when we are watching a film or we are doing something we like. So when you find yourself comfortable in the presence of the Lord, you find yourself not just checking on the time. And that is why sometimes fasting becomes a hindrance to staying in the presence of the Lord. Because during fasting, you know, there are three phases of fasting. The first phase is the initial phase with a lot of energy. And then the second phase is the phase of productivity, where you are most productive during your fast, whether it's prayer or whatever you are doing. And the third phase is the waiting for the time to be up phase. Do you understand? Where you are just waiting and watching. And that time is usually unproductive. You can have this same kind of phases during an all night. Because fasting, like staying up all night, is unnatural. Fasting all night is the initial phase with a lot of energy. 
Then the second phase where there's product is very productive. And the third phase is where you are staying awake. Basically, you are trying not to sleep. You are not praying to God. Your mind is not even on God. Your mind is that I shouldn't sleep. Are you with me? All right. You don't seem to be even interested in what I'm saying. So acknowledge the greatness of a great person without being a flatterer. That is, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Amen. And then the last one is to learn to talk about what is interesting to a great person. Amen. Now, if um, you are the, a teacher in a school and you meet with the president, President Mahama is our president now, and you meet with the president, all right, you can start talking about all the things that you need in the school. We need this. We need that. We need this. We don't have water. We don't have toilets. We don't have ex- textbooks. We don't have teachers. We don't have accommodation for teachers. You know, but I'm sure President Mahama knows that most of our schools don't have these things. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's why I say that don't waste your short period with somebody who is important by talking about things that you need, especially at the beginning. All right? So, now we move to why some people pray for a long time and why some people pray for a short time. The answer is simple. Those who pray for a long time have developed themselves in the things that are interesting to God, which is God's ways, God's work, and God's kingdom. All right? Especially the Lord's work. So when you are not involved or even not working for God, right, you have removed the chip, the main chip in the computer that allows the computer to work for a long time. That's the main thing. So the main, the big foundational reason why most Christians do not and cannot pray for a long time is because they do not and are not actively working for God. I don't mean they are not Christians. I mean they are not working in the work of God. Now, most of us have found Christ as our Savior. Amen. Amen. But after finding Christ, okay, we need to move on and actually get involved in His purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And get involved in His purpose. So when you meet with a great person, okay, you, you, can, you have so many things about your life that you can ask him. All right? I need this. I don't have this. I wish I had this. I, but after a point, that is going to be over. And then what do you say? Amen. Are you with me? After you've prayed that, what is going to happen next? So you see that this is the basic reason. The second reason is that Christians, right, do not know how to pray the different kinds of prayer that are found in the Bible. All right? The different types of prayer. So, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible lists some types of prayer. It says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks should be made for all men. Amen. For kings, And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life 
in all godliness and honesty. Amen. Now, notice the four different types of prayers that are mentioned there. Number one, supplications. Supplications is from the word supply. Again, that has to do with what you need. Lord, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. All right? And then prayers speaks of general prayers because the word prayer there just means prayers. You know, so different, I don't know really what it means, but it must mean some general kind of general prayers that are said by all people. And then intercessions. Intercessions has to do with intervening, all right, or interrupting or getting into a situation, right, to prevent something bad from happening. Like if somebody comes to intervene, you know, or to intercede for you, or to beg for you, to speak on your behalf, all right. Now, most of us don't speak on behalf of anybody about anything, okay? And then finally, giving of thanks. So now if you look at these uh, four types of prayers, you will notice that supplications cannot last long. I mean, let's say you need a torchlight. Lord, I ask for a torchlight in Jesus' name. Lord, please send me a torchlight. Lord, send an angel to give me a torchlight. Lord, I bind every devil that is holding my torchlight. I release torchlights, torches, torchlights in Jesus' name into my life. Amen. Your supplication is over. And it has not lasted more than 10 seconds. And there is nothing much to say after that. That's what I'm saying, that if you, if you meet with President Mahama, you are a teacher in a school in one of the districts of Ghana, and you need, you meet with him, your conversation with him is going to be very short if it is going to be centered around what you need. Then general prayers, you know, just this is, has to do with general chit chat, maybe. You know, when you meet someone, how, Charlie, how, how is it? You know, general communication. Oh, I'm fine. You know, this is a general communication when we come and meet with God, which also doesn't take long. How is it? Oh, good afternoon, good evening. You know, how's the weather? Charlie, how's your mom? Oh, yeah, fine, Charlie. Ah, your wife, you did that. Okay, Charlie, cool. Charlie, so later. This is general, and it's over. These are prayers, something general. Father, which I never thank you for today. We are grateful, oh Lord. You know, uh, today I've come in the name of Jesus. You know, there is nothing much to say generally. When you come to God, there will be something general to say. Prayers. Then intercessions come up. And then, uh, let me go to the last one first. Giving of thanks. That is also doesn't take so long, you know. Have you thought about it when you pray? So now we pray for a long time and we give thanks for a very short time. Or you've not noticed. I mean, even if they say, give thanks to God from now till for one hour, you, you'll be tired. <laughs> thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you. At a point, you start singing. <laughs> the prayers are finished. Now you look at the third type of prayer, which is intercessions. You see, now intercessions is again the part of prayer that has long, a long, longer time to do it. Do you get it? You need more time to intercede for people. Why do I say that you need more time to intercede for people? Because when you are, when you read the Bible, when Jesus was interceding for himself concerning what was going to happen to him, he was trying to intercept the plan of God and weave his way out of suffering. He was trying to prevent the suffering. You see, when he spoke to God, he, he, he told God something. He said, Lord, I know that with thee all things are possible. You know, when you tell somebody that I know, you can do it if I ask you, before you ask. I mean, it's a very, it's almost cheeky. Because you are telling the person, look, 
If you say no, I know that it, it's something else that you've decided to say no. Because I'm telling you that I know that you can say yes. So when you say to God, I know that with thee all things are possible. I know you can do everything. I'm telling you, Lord. Bottom line. Then he's trying to prevent himself from drinking this cup. He said, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup be taken away. I am praying now against a cup that I see in the spirit. It's coming to me this evening, Lord. He did that prayer for three hours. And still there was no change in the plan of God. Are you listening to me? Now, intercession is the prayer that you find throughout the Bible taking a long time. Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. Long discussion. It takes such a long part. If I bring it up on the screen now, you see so many verses of talking. Do you understand? And so you find there that, again, intercession takes a long time in the Bible because of the example of Jesus and the second example of um, Abraham. And the third example of Daniel. If you read Daniel, I think it's chapter 9, you find Daniel speaking on behalf of the people of Israel. Hey, I mean, the whole chapter is talking plenty. So many things, Lord, this and that and that and that and that. I mean, and at the end of it, God showed him a vision. You know, so you can see that intercessions uh, is what takes a long time. Now, interceding also would only come in to your life when you are doing the work of God. You wouldn't, I mean, I mean, how many of you woke up in the night to, to intercede for Lighthouse? I mean, how many of you were up in the night praying, Lord, 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 I intercede for the church, for the people. How many of you? Very few. So I'm explaining to you, my, my topic is why some people pray for a long time and why some people pray for a short time. Directly, you are not involved in the work of God. You, I'm not saying you are not a Christian. You're a Christian. You're a Christian. But you are not involved in the work of God. And until you get closer and deeper into the work of God, you will have not much to pray about. You will always be short of any, after praying for what you need, giving thanks, and some general, Lord, thank you, general prayers. It's just finished. Because intercession is the long one. You know, let's take food. Usually you can be given food, okay? Maybe you can be given some salad, some banku, some Ingmami floor, and uh, what else? Some, whatever you can begin. There is usually a big part of the main part of the meal. Is that not, is that not true? If I give you just the meat, you will say you haven't eaten. Because you need the banku or the kenke or whatever. And you will say that I haven't got the main thing which actually takes my time takes me time to eat. It's not that, but so if you can have the little bit, but there is always a section or a segment that is what takes the time. So that, that's why you, you see, prayer, prayer is boring to you. It will, be, it will always be boring. You see, I'm solving the prayer problem from the under of the problem. I'm not trying to, like, reasons why you should pray, frighten you for your life and for this and that. It is good to pray. But I'm explaining why you find it difficult to pray. It's because you don't no, you, are not, you are not involved with God. You see, look. If I, uh, let's take it that I'm an important person. Let's take it that I'm an important person. Okay? My sister. Come. Come. Are you, are you new? You are not new. Okay. Come. Now, supposing I meet this uh, sister. What's her name, please? Pardon? Naomi. Naomi what? Nikwe. Nikwe. 
Now, suppose I meet now, now in Nikwe and I, I said I'm going to uh, Takrade. So I'm going with Naomi. The two of us are going to Takrade together. So I'm driving with only me and you. Okay? Only me and you. Where, where do you work? Victoria's Pharmaceutical House. Victoria's Pharmaceutical House. What, what do you do there? I'm an account officer. Account officer. Okay. So, me and... Uh, what did you say your name is? Naomi. Naomi. <laughs> Come, don't, don't stay far from me. <laughs> we are going to talk about it. It's going to take us four hours. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> Asamwajan. <laughs> Victorious pharmaceuticals. That's what we will talk about. What, 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 okay, what do you plan to talk about with me? We are going to be together, just the two of us. Do you understand? What are we going to talk about? What do you plan to talk about with me? Before I give you the third reason why some people pray for a long time and some people pray for a short time. She must tell us what she's... Look, Pastor Okoma said, come and ask her what she plans to talk to me about because she's not answering my question. Do, do you want to talk about pro cold or <laughs> Ayarikov or something like that? What are you going to say? We are, we are going to talk for the first 10 minutes, 15, 30 minutes. What are we going to be talking about? Naomi. <laughs> Anything. Anything. <laughs> Mission. You will laugh throughout. <laughs> no, you see, listen, when you are praying to God, God doesn't say anything. No, so I'm, I'm going to be quiet. You are going to do the talking. <laughs> so speak. Don't laugh. Speak. <laughs> Start say, you, you need to speak quickly. Otherwise, if you were in the first laughter, somebody will pour water on you just now. I'll try and say something. Like, <laughs> At least. <laughs> At least. From, here, from here up to Malam Junction. You, let's talk from here to Malam Junction. Before from Malam Junction, we get to uh, uh, Kaswa. Before we'll be moving. No. <laughs> what are the topics you will discuss? And what are you going to say? Because all, all I'm going to say to you from here to Takrad is, mm, mm. Mm, mm. You will be talking. I'll ask where we are going. You ask where we are going. Takradi, we are going to Takradi. Yeah. Simple answer. One second answer. What we are going to do over there. And also. You will ask me questions. <laughs> when we go there, we are going to pray. I, I can answer you here before we get into the car. Let's go. We are going to the car. We are, we are going to Takradi. What do you think is going to happen in the car? It's not going to be easy in the car. Yeah. Because she, 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 she's, not, I, I, she's not involved. I don't know what you, you tell me you work at where? Victoris Pharmaceuticals. Your accounts officer. Yeah. Wow. I'm trying to see what we can discuss. <laughs> wow do you see why you have nothing to say yeah. you are not involved in God and his work you are so far so you need to get nearer you need to find out more about God know more about God you know how can you know about God if you don't read your Bible if you don't pray if you don't listen to messages Already you, you sleep when you read the Bible. So why don't you listen to a message? Do you understand? Buy a CD and let it help you start listening. So you start doing more things about God. You don't have anything to, to discuss. You said, where we are going? I said, we are going to pray and we are going to pray. And what again? 
Wow. Okay. She has nothing to say. The third reason why some people don't, why, why people, some people pray for a long time and others don't pray for a long time, okay, is because people don't pray in tongues. You see, even though there is nothing, this lady, should, she could have spoken in tongues from here to Takradi. If I was God driving the car, do you see? Because the Bible tells us that we know not what to pray for as we ought. Okay? Romans 8, 26. We do not know what to pray for as we should know. So God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us. And in Acts chapter 2, if you read from verse 1, the Bible says 1, 2, 3, 4, by verse 4, it says that they were all filled with the Spirit. Amen. And began to speak. They, they began to speak to God. Okay? As the Spirit helped them to speak. So you see, this our sister was dumbfounded. She couldn't open her mouth. She couldn't speak a word. Now that is why Jesus said when he was going that, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit who is going to help you. So you find out that most people's prayer life and involvement with God has dramatically increased since the coming of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Because if you look, the average Christian, I mean, you, you see, even if it's just even relating with me, how would you know many of the things that I'm doing for you to talk with me for a long time? So, it, it, is, it is a problem. Now, God decided, you see, when Jesus was here, he was going, Jesus told, it's better that I go. Nobody understood it. But he was explaining, he said, look, if I don't go, the helper will not come. But if I go, I will send you a helper. Look, since I started pastoring the First Love Church as well, I began to see something that people who don't have the Holy Spirit are not able to be Christians. Wow. Yeah, they, they find it very, very difficult to be Christians. In fact, you can, I would say you will hardly ever pray in your life if you don't speak in tongues. You will, you will be silent. Oh, prayer is a It will be very small, nothing. There will be nothing left of you. Yeah. And you see, the Holy Spirit helps you to pray and call on God in the right way. So speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit is a very important thing for all believers. And you see, many of us now in the charismatic churches, we have not received the Holy Spirit and we don't speak in tongues. And even those who speak in tongues, you have not learned how to stay in one place and pray in tongues. Now the formula in these churches, put on the message, the preaching, and press play, and pray in tongues till the message is over. That's all. It's because when you pray in tongues, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, the Bible is telling us that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does not speak to men. But when he's speaking in tongues, he's speaking to God. So, you know, tongues is a very great gift Amen. because of this scripture. Amen. When you speak in tongues, you speak to God. God is the one you are talking. When I say, I'm speaking to God. So if I do this for 30 minutes, it means I've spoken to God for 30 minutes. Now, look at this girl I was talking to. Even from here to Malam Junction, she cannot have anything to say. Because the question she's asking me, we are answering it whilst we are in the room. We have not even reached the car before she will start speaking. So, the Holy Spirit is necessary for every Christian. You cannot pray and you will not be influenced by the Holy Spirit if you don't speak in tongues. So, and there are two types of people, two things, problems with tongues. The first problem is that some people don't have the Holy Spirit because we assume that, oh, you have the Holy Spirit. That is why I say that every Sunday we are doing Holy Spirit baptism outside there after the service. And throughout the fasting, we will be doing Holy Spirit. We want all our members must receive the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. And secondly, you must learn how to speak in tongues when you speak in tongues, which is you must know how to practice like you speak for 30 minutes continuously, putting a Christian CD music, okay, and play. You cannot listen to Joy FM and then be speaking in tongues. It doesn't work that way. 
There are certain atmosphere for certain things, and certain atmosphere doesn't work with it. You have to put on a spiritual atmosphere and speak in tongues. That's how I became spiritual. I became spiritual because it was also difficult for me to understand God and to know God. I just started by following this speaking time. My the Christian leader I had said, Pray in time. Shall we pray? We use time to pray. We use time to pray. You will change. You will change. Nobody will change you. All this running around from prophet to prophet. The person will speak prophecy and you'll be going from place to place. They give you charms. You'll be mixing juju with Christianity. It's because you yourself have not learned how to be spiritual just as a person. Yeah. So rise up from this message. And that is why some people pray for a short time and some pray for a long time. The first reason is what? You are not involved in the work of God. So you have nothing to say. I only speak to people who I work with. Even pastors, full-time pastors, I don't speak to them. Once I'm not working with you, I don't speak to you. I don't have, not, not that I don't want, if I meet you, I can meet, speak general speaking. But if I'm doing a project with you, I'll speak to you every day till the project is over. Even if you are in the secular world and I'm doing a project with you and you don't work in my office, I'll speak to you every day till the project is over because that's how I drive my project till, till it gets finished. Once you are working with me, I, I'll speak to you all the time. You also speak to me all the time. Even if you don't like me, you are, and if you don't like me, I wouldn't work with you. So you do not work for God. That is why you do not pray for a long time. And what's the second reason? You don't know the different kinds of prayer. And there are different types of prayer. There's prayer for working, the prayers, general, thanksgiving, and so on. But intercession is the main one. And that one, again, brings you to the work of God. And again, I can see why, after even saying this, you still will not pray. That is why Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to help us. I've come to see people are not good Christians because they don't have the Holy Spirit influencing them. From today, I want you to really believe in the Holy Spirit. Use the gift of God. Trust in the Holy Spirit. Pray to God for the Holy Spirit. And anybody who is in this church, you don't speak in town, you haven't got the Holy Spirit. Please, we are doing special classes. Are we doing it or not? Are you doing it? In that room there, after the service, do what I say. Don't do what you think. Do what I say. Do what I say. Do what I say. Pray for the people. Holy Spirit. Baptism. Amen. That is what we need in the church. And praying in tongues. Nobody is above these basic principles of walking with the Holy Spirit and walking with God. No one is above praying for a long time. You need to pray. If Jesus came to this earth and spent a great while before they pray, you also need to pray. You also need to get up and pray. Otherwise, you can never be a good Christian. No matter what, you will never be able to. It's not easy. Amen. Stand to your feet. Shall we invite Bishop Saki? Father, thank you for your word this morning. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the great blessing this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, we are here this morning. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Pray. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Savior. If you are here like that, lift your right hand up high. Your right, up, right hand up high. I want to give my life to God. This morning, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, come, come to me. I want to pray with you here. Come from where you are standing. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Come, come. I want to pray with you. You lifted your hand. Come. Come to I God this morning. I'm going to pray with you. you God bless you. God bless you. Come. That I take every moment I'm away. Lift your hands up. Close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes and lift your hands. And say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. 
Lord Jesus. Please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. Today. Today. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus as my savior. As my savior. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I confess. I confess. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Please write my name. Please write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. What's your name? Hollins. God bless you. What's your name? Teddy. God bless you. What's your name? Kevin. Please go with our pastor who is standing over here. And you come back and join us. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Welcome, Bishop Saki. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Thank God for powerful, powerful teaching this morning. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Are you blessed today? I didn't hear you. Are you blessed today? It's a wonderful, wonderful teaching. I believe that the illustrations are so practical, isn't it? And down to earth. You can relate. We want to thank the bishop for such a down to earth, practical, relevant message that he shared with us today. And think through the messages. Think through every Sunday comes with very powerful, down to earth, practical, relevant messages for us. And I believe that it's intended to change our Christian lives. Say amen. Now, after the service, if you need the Holy Spirit, you need to, the feeling of the Holy Spirit, you need to. Go to the Adley Chapel. Reverend Oko Mesa, can you stand and we give them a wave again? He's going to meet you there and teach you a little and pray for you. It's very important so that you can pray for long hours. You can enjoy being the Prince of God and you cannot be just looking around and asking, what are people praying about that they are not ending the prayer meeting? But you also be able to pray and enjoy being in the presence. It's important. It's for your own Christianity's sake. And your own life sick. Amen. Wonderful. All right. Now we want to receive our tithe. If you brought your tithes, can you kindly stand to your feet, please? If you brought your tithe, tithe 10% of all that God blesses you with, please. Can you stand to your feet if you brought your tithes to church quickly and um, lift up your envelope or card and let us pray? Father, we thank you for today. We appreciate you and love you. Grateful for the privilege we have to give and to honor you in our tithing. We ask you to be gracious to us as we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please come to the front and put your tithes in the basket. And please clap for them and encourage them as they come to the front. Wonderful. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Right. God bless you. Keep coming all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. Everybody take out your offerings now. Everybody take a good offering. Take out a good offering. And um, when we need to take offering. <laughs> all right. Everybody find a good offering this morning and let's all give. It's important that you give. When we're taking the first offering, most of you are not around. So you must even give double, double, double. All right. Lift up your offerings now and let's pray. Please. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I can wait. I have time to wait. So you are now looking for the money. Find it and lift your hands up. I can see you right over there. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today again. We appreciate your kindness, your mercy, and your love. We thank you for such a practical teaching of your word that we have received today as we give our offering, be glorified in our giving in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Read, I shall receive the offerings from the hymn square as well. Eh? Okay, that's how it is. All right. Good, just a couple more announcements and then we'll be out of here. Again, the fasting is on. Now, do you, do you have the books now? The books, who has them now? Who has the books? Who has the books? He that hath, who has them? Okay. Now, I told you, the book is normally 30 CDs. But for this period, we are sending for 
18 Ghana cities. Please, if you are saying that you must get a change of two, don't say that I don't have any change, so the people should take it like that. I don't accept that. All right. If you need the book, or you can buy also one for a friend, get lift your hands up, they'll bring it to you where you are. Get lift, if you need a, one of the, a copy of the book. Look, you, everybody must have it all. It's important. There's somebody in front. Now, look, 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 look. You guys are wasting, those who sell books are wasting my time, really. I don't accept it. All right. If you need a book, just wave your hand. They'll bring it to you where you are. They'll bring it to you where you are. All right. They'll bring it to you quickly. All right. Now, okay. When we share the grace outside, everybody can get the books out there. And I believe that. But you must have it. You must have it. Because you cannot just be coming through the three weeks. And you can afford 18 CDs this period. How many of you think you can afford it? Say amen. Look, it's important that you have it. This book is a book that will change your whole life completely. Absolutely. Totally. So get it. Even if you're not going to, you're not able to come for the fasting period, just get the book anyway and soak in. I believe that God will be a, a gracious to you. And you'd enjoy the blessing of uh, the teaching of the, of the word. And you'll be so changed and transformed. So make sure you have it. You must have it. You I am your pastor. I'm telling you, you must have the book. Because it's important that you have it. And it's like when you go to a school, you need a certain type of textbook. Now this period, this is a book that you will need. And you must have it by all means. And if you don't have it, um, inspiration service, I'll tell President Bishop to stop preaching here during the she come for on the second or the first service if you don't have it. So next week Sunday, if you don't have it, I'll tell Bishop that they are not interested, so she didn't preach in this service again. What a shock. Can we stand to our feet, please? All right. Please, those who are sending the books, if you send the book, give them the change. Don't keep the change. I'm serious about that. All right. Can we all stand to our feet? All right. Are you blessed today? How many of you came to church for the first, the first time in this church? First time. Can I, give you, can I get a wave of your right hand? Your first time. Wow. Wow. You know something? Pick up your Bible, your bag, anything you came to church with and come to me now. It's your first time. Come right now. Come right, right, right now. Right now. To me. Clap for them as they come. Clap for them as they come. The first time. Okay. Their first time here. Come. All oh, the clap for them. They're coming. Clap for them. God bless you. Fantastic. I'm very happy. Oh, it's okay. Don't climb the stage. It's too long. All right, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. All right, Professor, take them right to my office. I'm going to talk to, talk to them right away. Yes, I'm going to see you right in my office. Hallelujah. Right, now hold your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor, my friend, this preacher, you were inside. Ask the person, are you like Naomi? Are you like Naomi? <laughs> what a shock. Ask him, do you speak in tongues? If the answer is no, let's go to Adelaide Chapel now, now, now. Listen, this is going to take you just about 20 minutes to be there and pray. It's for your own good and for your own blessing. So if you know Holy Spirit baptism, let's go to Adelaide Chapel. Reverend O'Call will be there. Lead us in prayer and I believe you'll be blessed. Now let's share the grace now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, the fellowship, the contribution, and the participation of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.